geometric brains goes. This, in principle, we are set and comfortable with doing that. And really, most of the examples that were done, as I said, were for toroidal cases, because there you can parameterize one cycles, three cycles as products of one cycles and separate tori. And uh, those simplest possible examples are relatively easy to construct, both by getting the standard model gauge group factors and satisfy the Ramon Ramon tadpole conditions. Uh, but uh, as we, we argued uh, after that is that uh, actually we don't have much of a calculational control over uh, higher loop corrections, this, the so-called uh, what we call the Schwartz tadpole corrections that, uh, and uh, uh, protections due to supersymmetry, if we had supersymmetry, are absent here. So it would be natural to address now the constructions that would produce supersymmetric models. So let's turn to supersymmetric models. And in this sense, uh, this specifically implies that the brains have to wrap supersymmetric cycles namely the angles of intersections at e for each set of brains where they intersect have to be tuned precisely under these conditions that we obtain when we calculate the spectrum at intersections so that the sum of angles locally add up to zero. And uh, uh, so uh, in order to... Uh, to actually satisfy now also global conditions, we pretty much are forced to introduce new objects, which are orientiform planes. <laughs> Those are actually non-dynamic objects, but they do couple to closed string sector and basically have a net charge. So they happen to have a tension that is negative. And if they are supersymmetric, um, uh, basically they are sources of charges, brain charges. So if they are planes, uh, that extend in the same number of dimensions as six brains. Uh, so in particular, uh, uh, as particular six brain, it would, they would extend, these objects would extend in six plus one dimensions. And so they would have negative charge. Uh, in, in particular, uh, it turns out that one can do specific calculation and this charge is uh, in certain units by which we classify the d brain charges minus four times the charge of uh, uh, so uh, or the charge of the uh, uh, by, by which we measure the charge of the, the six brains so so how do we introduce this geometric non-dynamic objects uh, so in particular in the case of, of the discussions that I'm focusing on, I'm going to introduce what we call O6 brains. Okay? So those would be some rigid objects in, uh, in the theory, non-dynamic, that will have uh, negative fixed charges. So one often refers to this, um, uh, char uh, this uh, uh, brain charges uh, that uh, these objects have to be uh, O6 minus, minus. And so, so in particular, this whole, in this whole framework, introduction of oriented for planes uh, as, as objects, rigid objects in geometry actually is accompanied also by, with the world sheet actions on states. So, so the whole oriented for projection introduces uh, 
action on the worksheet coordinates. So this is the worksheet action, namely our tau and sigma worksheet coordinates. So this is worksheet parity, namely the, the theory has to be invariant under worksheet parity transformation. Combination of geometric action in target space. So this, this is associated with the geometry. And it's an analog of Z2 involution in the target space. And then one also has to be careful once you are dealing with the um, with the world sheet fermions in superstring theory, one has to also uh, act with minus one to the FL, which is the fermion number associated with the world sheet fermions in the left moving sector of the theory. The key thing that we, I want to focus here as far as geometry goes is, is the geometric action, uh, which is effectively a Z2 involution. So, so in a complex manifold with a holomorphic three form and the killer form, the action of this, geome the geometric action R is we basically involves change of omega. Um, uh, so holomorphic three forms on M6. So if this is in M6, holomorphic three forms will change a sign and so will J. There could be some issues of phases. So, uh, so to be more concrete again, this is in a general framework of uh, some complex scalar manifold. But if we are sticking again to tori and writing tori as a product of three products of two tori, each of them parameterized by complex coordinates zi, just in the spirit, you know, uh, so this would be if this is x2i minus 1, x2i. So it, it, it's co each complex direction will be again parameterized like that, min plus i x i, i from 1 to 3. Basically, the, 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 the way of choosing the the geometric uh, action of Z2 involution would involve um, changing. So in this case, Zi under Z2 involution will turn into minor, sorry, into Z bar. Okay. So Z goes into Z bar. So if you think that uh, torus is a part of the complex plane, okay, the action, uh, geometric action Will, will change imaginary component into complex conjugate and, and that would now, uh, that should be, uh, the space should be invariant under this geometric action. So in particular, uh, what will this action introduce on a torus? It will introduce O planes. Geometric, so it would be a three cycle okay, that will be fixed under this action. So uh, in particular on a torus again, uh, the actual three cycle, so in a single two torus, that would be a single uh, one cycle. That this, this particular uh, one cycle on two torus would be invariant under this action. So let me now draw all three of them. So in a concrete case of all three of them, we would have, so three tori, each of them specified with zi. So the, 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 the fixed cycles of the orientifold action will turn out to be, in this particular case, the three cycles of that time. Why this one? Okay, this one is also because this mapped onto, by, by the, by the, or Z2 involution is mapped into that, but that's under the same, uh, the same point in the torus under lattice translation, okay? So, uh, so uh, the, with, the, 
with the existence of this rigid objects that carry non-trivial charge, our tadpole conditions that, that I spelled out in homology a sum over an A um, pi A, where pi A are all the cycles that, wrap, uh, that brains wrap, okay, will now involve also the actual charge associated with this three cycles that uh, uh, three cycles associated with the particular O planes in the internal space. And because their charge is four, so I have to add four. In, so in the homology of three cycles, the contribution to tadpoles, okay? So global conditions gets modified by contributions of the orientifold charge now, that's not everything yet, because what happens now, we have actually orientable action also on cycles wrapped by brains. So, uh, so in particular, these are orientable planes. Let me choose a particular brain that wraps some cycle. So for concreteness, if I choose a brain like that, let's say three cycle of this type, something like this, okay? I choose a, a, a particular brain that wraps a cycle, okay? There is actually orientable action on the cycle. Cycles are not invariant in general under this orientable action. So now when I have brains wrapping particular cycle, there will be also an image. And this image in this case goes Z into Z bar, so this cycle flipped like this, moved by lattice translation, becomes, so if this is A cycle, we have now A prime cycle. Okay, and similarly here, this would now look A prime cycle, and in this case, this is actually just the same cycle, only orientation is changed, okay? Uh, so, uh, so when we are building models now with global consistency conditions, when we have this orientifold symmetry, geometrically we don't include only brains that trap the original cycles because there is the, the action, orientifold action. We have to add to our charge conservation also contributions from orientifold images of cycles. So we have basically modified, we have to properly modify, we have to include more brains, okay? Uh, also wrapping orientiful images of cycles. But luckily, the previous trivial condition for supersymmetric cases, which would be satisfied only for NA0, can now be solved for non-trivial supersymmetric brains because the orientiful charges compensate for it. Okay? Yes. Could you say it again? Because yeah. It seems like we have many oranges. Yeah, in, the, in this concrete case, just of a torus, torus, this is actually, um, yes, how many do we have, right? We, uh, so so, uh, so we, 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 we have how many cycles? Three cycles now, right? Eight, right? Two times two times two. By taking, I mean, they're in homology. In homology, they are the same, okay? But in terms of counting, of, of the whole amount of this negative charge that the, such a plane, such, uh, such O planes contribute is two times two times two, okay? So that would be, so when we count this charge, this is the charge, total charge of O planes, okay? That will give us basically, uh, in the case of torus, okay? in the case of torus, will give us A times the basic homology cycle AAA, okay? So this would give us, actually, so let's turn to torus, okay? This is particular choice here, 
then uh, uh, the total charge over all this uh, will be actually eight times cycle A1 cross A2 cross A3. So in homology, the total charge contribution will come through this space cycle, A1, A2, A3, A times, okay, times four. Okay, so that's actually the only one that contributes on torus, right? But that's enough. That's enough now to, to well, to build uh, some models, hopefully. No, not really, but okay, yeah. Yeah. So the calculation of charge, that um, the charge includes the OM fold and its image too. Right, so right. All those things are, have, have, all those things have negative charge. Uh, sorry, sorry, you mean orientifold charge? Yeah, that charge, I mean, you just include that in the, in the, in the, in the no. term. No, first term is just counting the charge of all the brains. Now, brains can wrap cycle, but because we have orientifold projection, right. there are also images of cycles. Then what about charge function in the second term? Second term, is the charge contribution from those rigid O planes? Okay. So, so what? What those red ones? Those are fixed point of the orientifold action. Okay, and those are non-dynamic objects, but they have the fixed negative charge. Okay. And you can calculate that because they couple to closed string sector, and you can in principle determine its tension. So, so basically, first term comes from the uh, brain. And yes. Exactly, exactly, right. So when I'm saying pi O6 is actually the total charge that is associated, I mean, it's counting the, all the side, three cycles that O planes can wrap, right? So on torus, it turns out to be only A1, A2, A3 cycles, but you see you have, you have a multi multiplicity of eight of them. In homology, they are the same, but in terms of how many can contribute to total charges eight times of them, okay? So this is basically the contribution, okay? Right? And so here, this is only from this cycle, so to, because I always catch that sort of for, for, for toroidal case, so how would this story look like now, okay? Now recall, if I'm A1, A2, A3, this comes as N A, coming from first brain, now we know it's sort of by heart, those would be, N1A, N2A, N3A wrapping numbers, right? How about contribution from this image cycle along A1, A2, A3? So, so, so let's let's care, so let's look at the specific cycle out of which we build uh, the three cycles. So those are on 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 the um, so so this is NI. AI plus MI BI. So this is a one cycle parameterization in, for each of the three. Two. So, so the whole cycle is parameterized like this. So, or I used eyes, small eyes. Okay. So, so we have. So this is a three cycle parameterizing. Uh, uh, so this would be particular three cycle. Okay. Now under orientifold action, what happens? Under orientifold action, so if this is a cycle parameterized in terms of three cycles, under orientifold action, we are going to create orientifold image of a cycle. Okay? So now let's try to understand what happens to A cycles under orientifold image. A cycle is this one, uh, homologically, is this cycle. Under orientifold image, it's fixed. So this would produce for us the same cycle back, A. But what happens to B cycle? Re recall B cycle turns into minus B. So we have minus M I B I. Okay? So under orientifold image, okay, in terms of the toroidal module, what I'm changing is wrapping number M into minus M, and N remains for this choice, okay? So, so let's go now to, since we are now by heart, we can look at all the charges. So when we are in the basis of N, A1, A2, A3, right, of uh, one of the basis of capital A cycles, 
The first term gives me that. What does the second one give me? The same, right? So it's actually twice, okay? Minus four times eight. So my, my charge conservation condition, I have to sum over all the brains that I'm putting in, right? So actually my tadpole conditions now are basically here twice, they contribute, but as this is orientable charge that can compensate, okay? Now I can go on. I can take the other set of capital I cycles. Uh, so what did we have? We have A1, B2, B2, B3, right? What is the, so, so I'm applying now that along this basis, direction of three cycles, okay? Now, orientable planes have what charge under this? A1, B2, B3. A1, B2, B3. No charge. All the charge was used up along A1 because they really wrap only A1, A2, A3 cycles. So all the other charges actually from orientable planes in other basis directions are zero, okay? And now, uh, so those are two Bs that will introduce now in our parametrization two Ms, right? So each M, so the first term we know by heart, so Na, so this is N1A, M2A, M3A, right? Now, orientable image of the cycle will switch Ms into minus Ms, but I have even number of them, so it's twice as much. So this is the second one. So among uh, capital A basis cycles, I have then two more perturbations with two Ms plus two, so, so the first condition is this minus 32, second one is this minus zero equals zero, and then I have two more perturbations of Ms. And, and so plus one into, you know, uh, whatever, into two and one into th three, if I, if I permute those Ms and, and, and Ms accordingly, okay? How about B cycles? Capital B cycles. Capital B cycles had either three Bs or one B. But we know what does orientable action does. Changes Bs into, uh, Ms into minus M. So they all have odd number of Ms, so this and this contribution cancels, okay? So really for the torus with orientable projection, we only get those four tadpole conditions. Others are automatic, okay? So those are the my conditions, okay? So four of them. This is zero. This is zero plus two more perturbations with two m's in it. Okay. And um, and uh, you know that would be now modified tadpole conditions. Okay. But I'm not done yet. I'm not done. Tadpoles. Uh, I was discussing how it gets modified. But don't we have now some modifications of the spectrum too? Okay. So let's talk about modification of the spectrum. So global conditions, no spectrum. Can I have a yes. Question? Yes. So when you are introducing O6 planes, uh, I'm assuming yes. that you are uh, basically doing orientable projecting at I2A basis, right? Uh, with, with that, uh, it, it's oriented of type 2A, right? Yeah, I mean, with that R being at the north peak, the increment is here. Right, right, but also I have to do an ordinary world volume too. Okay, yeah. in ordinary space, right. I also so have that, in, yeah. So in general, you're basically getting like two, three, four, three, eight, four, six planes, right? Eight, indeed. That's what I was counting there, yeah. Eight. So, oh. Eight, those are the eight. So two times them, two times two. All of them wrap the, uh, uh, Homologically the same cycles, but there are eight of them. And that's what gave me this eight so factor, eight. you know, okay? So, so the basis I introduced them, yeah. It's, uh, it's just always useful to go back to that, okay, to have the better feeling for, to go to tours. Anyway, let's talk about spectrum because we have new issues here, okay? As you, when you're dealing with the spectrum, okay, we have now introduced, uh, so let's focus on internal space and let me just do it locally again. Like, just one of them, local description, as we know. So, so we have, uh, so we have a brain wrapping a cycle A. So let me just denote that an A brain. Think of three times one cycles or three cycles in some, okay. 
But now there is the two involution. Okay, so we have now action. Let's say that this Z2 involution comes, you know, through through this fixed point, uh, free, uh, fixed cycle. Okay, so each cycle, okay, if it intersects with this Z2 involution uh, curve, fixed curve, will map under its image. Okay. So what can happen now that we are encountering a new intersection of matter, okay, uh, of, of cycles. Not just cycle A intersecting with cycle B where we got this bifundamental matter. Now we can have cycle A intersecting with its orientable image, right? So this is the, uh, and so at each intersection like that, you expect some new chiral matter to appear. Okay, after all, uh, this is, you know, this is basically the same idea by which I locally described intersection of brain A and brain B, right? So recall when I did locally uh, uh, this intersection of brain A with brain B, we have things like this. So this was brain A and that was brain B, okay? A and B brain. And what we got here is bifundamental matter. And we got always massless spin one half. If angles were right, then it became also super field, okay? Right. So how, what's happening now here? So here what we have, I have, you see, so those were charges here and here of A and B, okay? Now we have charges of UA and UA. Okay, basically, just from quantizing open strings at each of these intersections, I expect to have massless matter to appear. Okay? So I expect to have spin one half fields. Okay? But now the issue becomes in what representation under champ pattern factors of this UNA brain it is. Okay? So basically what I'm doing here is, you know, here was bifundamental of different UN groups, right? Because now I'm tensoring one fundamental with another fundamental. Okay. And so this can produce two choices. Either this massless state will be anti-symmetric or in symmetric representation of the UNA gauge group, okay? It's, if you careful do the oriented for projection, you would see that actually uh, this will, you have to do this parity projection of the strings as well, and so it turns out to be really UAs only. No, this is locally everywhere, always. You agree with that, right? Because yes. locally, I can always write that as, you know, uh, as product of but of three R twos and local intersection. But I mean, if you look at the thesis as a whole, then the A cycles are the image of A cycles are only A cycles, and the image of B cycles is B bar, let's say, under only in the four. Uh, okay. So I mean, the image of the cycle is of the same type if it's A cycle. But if it has also B cycles, the image is some new cycle, right? Yeah, but it's of the yeah. B type. Yeah, but the general Maybe cycle. Like opposite orientation, but opposite B type only. Right, so what you're referring to, look, in general, what you're saying is, okay, let me take the cycle that has only N I's and no M's, right? Or the cycle that has only M I's, but no, you know, it's a, right? But no N's. Indeed. Those are cycles that are invariant under orientable projections, okay? They become themselves. I'm getting to that. Could you just spare me a second? Let's just deal first with the more generic situations, okay? When I have both of those guys turned on, and then you agree, right? So, so if I'm looking at this just locally in one R2, okay? This is both N and M cycle. Okay, A and B cycle, so it becomes new cycle because it's N minus M. Okay, so let's look at generic situation. So if brain A 
has both all n and m's non-zero, right? So it, it's not parallel with the orientifold cycle anywhere. Okay? Then its image will fully intersect. So let's talk about this generic situation. Then we'll go to the special case in a second, okay? So, so, the, so the issue here is we still have generical UN gauge group because with each brain, we have fully different image, right? And this image can intersect with itself, producing new chiral matter in either symmetric or anti-symmetric representation, okay? And now it, it, it's a little bit, one has to be a little bit careful to identify which particular intersection corresponds to which representation. And it turns out that actually the way we originally derived that is using anomaly cancellation, non-abelian anomaly cancellation, which is guaranteed in these models, and found the geometric interpretation of how many anti-symmetric and how many symmetric we have, okay? And so as far as symmetry goes, it turns out to be related to geometric expression again, as intersection of a cycle with its orientiful image prime, and then the cycle with its O plane. And one half, okay? And the upper sign will tell me how many symmetric I have, and the lower sign will tell me uh, 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 how many, how many anti-symmetric, how many symmetric I have. In other ways, let me, be care, let me say it again. A and A prime, okay, its image brain, intersect at certain number, okay? The total number of this intersection is pi A, pi A prime, okay? But this number, Splits depending on what kind of intersection we have into two sets. I would have that many of anti-symmetric and that many of symmetric, okay? So the total number of symmetric and anti-symmetric is actually the intersection number. So look what technically happens in internal space. Uh, sometimes, you know, you would have intersection. This cycle is compact, okay? So, you know, now let me put this on a torus, right? Not just local description that I'm talking about here. I'm, I'm putting that on a torus. So the cycle actually continues. So let, 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 let it continue in a certain way. Like, right, this is a cycle specified by certain. And so you would have, and then this one similarly, let's say like this. So you see you have special intersections with, which sit on all planes sometimes, and those they don't sit. Okay, so, so you have to be careful how you take certain linear combinations and do orientable projection to get physical states, whether they are in symmetric or anti-symmetric representations. So, so that comes in details. You, you can see at which points, you know, which states, because uh, under orientable projection, this is not invariant state. So you have to take, uh, so let me maybe, but so let me take this and add one combination would be symmetric representation and another one would be anti-symmetric one. Okay, so, so it becomes careful analysis of states and how they respect orientiful projections, okay? So, so anyway, the point is, as far as the total number goes, it splits into number symmetric and anti-symmetric, okay? So there is a new story here because now we have new type of spectrum that is associated with symmetric and anti-symmetric states. And that turns out to be actually very useful for grand unified model building. Okay. In particular, let me mention the Georgia Glashow guts, U5 guts. So the, the core building block are brains with U5 symmetry and let's say some other brain B. Yeah. So I have to, let me, since I, I was postponing, but let me just tell you with a punchline. This is the cycle that is invariant under orientiful projection. So its image is the same. 
That means that in my Champadon factors, when I quantize Gitch bosons that start and end on this brain, because its image is the same, I have to do extra orientable projection, which changes UN symmetry, in this case to SPN symmetry. So the gate symmetry on which such orientable invariant cycle of the brain lives produces new gate symmetry. Yes, yeah, so it's really one single brain, but the gate symmetry is new because now I have to do, you know, now I, I'm not looking. You see, when it's generically intersect, it's just you brain and include images. When it's invariant on orient, then I have to make Champadon factors of you and gate symmetry also to be properly oriented for symmetric, and this gives me SP group. In this context, it gives me SP groups. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, but that depends on different signs of, of all planes. I'm talking about the, the one that is specifically designed for these six brains, okay? So that's, sorry I was postponing, but I was getting to it. Maybe I should have done that first. But I, I wanted to focus first on my U5 brains and U spectrum. So in particular, you see what can happen now, if you have A brain and B brain, both U brains, so you always have images, in principle, you can get bifundamental representation. So let's say five and, and some charge. So let's say minus one, okay? Uh, but now you can also have brain intersecting with itself. So you can have symmetric representation or anti-symmetric representations, okay? And, um, uh, 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 Actually, let me choose it in this way. If I have representation with five bars and tens, the combination of anti-symmetrics and five bars would build actually the whole grand uniform matter multiplet of U5 symmetry, okay? So, so, uh, so this orientifold compactifications of D-brains can produce for us the spectrum that could act effectively as a spectrum of grand unified theories with fives and tens which come from anti-symmetric. Okay. Yeah, you can have five, uh, uh, five uh, fifteens and uh, symmetrics as well, but you can also engineer it so that this and this cancels and you have no fifteens, okay? So, so there, there's a way of engineering those things, okay? Uh, I think one thing I forgot is when I intersect brain A and B, brain B, I can also intersect brain A with image of brain B. And what will this give me? Uh, so when A and B brain intersect is fundamental, anti-fundamental. When brain A intersects with A prime, it will give me both fundamental. Okay, so, so you can have new representations. So, uh, you know, that's why I was a little confused here. Okay, because, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, so, so what I'm, yes. Uh, so, so if I have A brain, right, and, I, and, and B brain, A brain and B brain, uh, B brain, now I can also intersect A brain with B prime. Okay? And so this is fundamental, anti-fundamentals would be both by the fundamental, okay. The other sector gives me conjugate fields, but conjugate in the sense of effective theory, right? Because in effective theory, uh, a conjugate, I mean also, if, uh, so if those are AB, left-handed Carl fields, so this would be AB, okay. Then the other sector will give me right-handed fermions, but in conjugate <laughs> representation, which I have to still used to write my effective theory, right? So those, so, the, so those are the left-handed guys. The other guys will be this. And those are the conjugate guys, okay? So uh, it's not left-handed multiplet in, in conjugate representation. It are right-handed guys conjugate, strictly conjugate of them. Which, so for this guys, it becomes AA. A, I mean, both fundamental and then complex conjugate in the other sector. So you see you have, you have a richer structure in the spectrum by getting um, also bifundamentals, not only fundamental, anti-fundamental, of brains intersecting with their images. 
you can get symmetric and anti-symmetric. And last thing is, with brain is invariant under orientative full action, and you, you pointed out exactly on Turei which are the ones. So in principle, you have large number of them. Those that wrap only B cycles, or those that wrap only N cycles. Those are all invariant under this action. And so I don't have the image. The image is the brain itself. So now I have to make this whole set of states invariant under oriented full projection, which is encoding in, in anti-symmetrizing uh, the chem pattern factors. Okay. So the last thing is, as far as spectrum goes, is so when A is the same as A prime, so when A and A prime are basically homologically uh, invariant, some, some are point, uh, so, so invariant under action, oriented full action. Okay? And then you know you, when you quantize open strings, okay, now you have to include also oriented folding, the whole oriented folding. So, uh, so there's additional projection on gem pattern factors. So in this case, UN symmetry okay, becomes SPN symmetry. Okay. If you have different type of brains, if there were different uh, action, uh, geometric action, uh, you may get SON brains. Okay. Uh, so, so let me summarize that in a little table, Okay, the story in the little table, uh, which is, uh, as far as spectrum goes, Right, uh, so spectrum now. Of uh, when we have U N brains, so when we have uh, U N A and U B brains and B brains, uh, basically we can now have intersection of A cycle with B, which was. In this notation, let me do it like this. If the, uh, with the convention, I'm going to stick to consistent conventions. So this is B. It's in bifundamental. Yeah, I can also intersect this with A prime with B, which will give me A delta B. Again, with convention that those are positive numbers. Okay, and then I can also uh, have new states that are completely symmetric or anti-symmetric, which involves one half. Now, uh, to stick to consistent convention is this. It's A prime with A plus N minus sign, and now intersection of O6 brains with pi A. And uh, if that's positive, that would produce for me, the upper sign would produce symmetric representation and the lower sign, uh, sorry, anti-symmetric, and the lower sign will produce the symmetric representation. Okay? So another lesson, if pi A under oriented full action is pi A prime, the UN symmetry that would be there just living on general cycles turns into SP and A symmetry. Because we can, we can use those extra brains, putting them on this invariant cycles under oriented full projection, and hopefully, you know, fill up some of the mismatches in the tadpoles, okay? Recall that what we want to do now is with this setup is preparing now our solutions with certain choices of wrapping numbers that would have the right intersection numbers of the standard model, gauge group factors, okay? But then we have to plug this stuff in into the, uh, into the tadpole conditions. And uh, sometimes the, choice, the, chosen, the chosen wrapping numbers won't completely fill up, you know, uh, satisfy the tadpole conditions. And actually, uh, we may have to add extra SP brains so often those SP brains that sit on this, you know, like A1, A1, A2, okay, or uh, A1, B2, B3. That's also invariant, by the way, because one will go into minus one, but this one will also go into minus one. So 
two minus signs for game give invariant thing. Okay, so there are a bunch of, of those guys. Uh, uh, there were actually four of them that could contribute to different SP group factors in tadpole constellations. Okay, so we, we used to, we, we like to call those brains that we typically need filler brains. Yeah. Sorry? It's a matter of convention, okay? Whether you mean you USP or SP, okay? Yeah, but you can use it USP N over two oh, okay. convention. So I think I'm using the second one. Yeah, one has to be careful with uh, how you count these NAs because recall here these NAs are on cycle and image. So actually you have two NA brains that now collapse and so it's an oriented full invariant. So you have to be careful about these numberings. You know, what is where do you put two? But I think I use this convention, USP, N over two. So SA and is it SO2? It's SON, I think. Hmm? The point is, okay, the point is you have UN here and UN here. We can fix those numbers, okay? If you want this, if that makes you happy, I'll do it like this. Yeah. No, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but one has to be careful with that, and one can work this out in details. I think you're right, okay? I think you're right about that. Yeah. It just depends. Precise. Uh, yeah. You want it to see by. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can you can view that as okay. Yeah. Let me let, let me just. Uh, uh, yeah. S uh, s one has to be careful how you count the total charges and, and then what is the surviving gauge thing. Anyway, um, so that would be basically wrapping up the, the cases when we have, uh, um, when we want to implement things with, with supersymmetry. Uh, maybe one more thing I want to say, what, what is supersymmetry condition? Basically supersymmetry condition, how would it, what, what would it basically become, at least in the toroidal case, okay? Supersymmetry condition will basically become a condition that angles, intersection angles of brains, now with respect to our basic brain, which is O-plane, okay, add up to zero. Because I want to count Susie condition with respect to some same, you know, basis, Right, which would be O-plane. So the staff poles with the SUSY condition in the toroidal case will basically tell us that the sum of angles that each brain makes relative to the O-plane. So that would involve now for each brain equals zero. Okay? So SUSY condition in this case would, uh, would, would fix these angles. Now, you know, the, our cycles are fixed by this co-prime integer numbers, okay? But angles depend also on the sizes of radii of this tori, okay? So in particular, let's calculate an angle. So if you calculate an angle, so let's calculate tangent of the first angle, okay, for the first cycle. So let, so let this be a brain wrapping a one cycle. So tangent of, of the cycle would be equal, um, so the brain wraps a cycle N1, A1 plus M1, B1, okay? So that's the cycle wrapped by this brain. Uh, but now the actual tangent of the angle, uh, so, so let, let's be, let me be concrete again. So let me take a, a specific, let, let, let me just, yeah. Let me take a specific cycle like this, okay? So this is my A cycle, and this is B cycle, and I'm making now the brain wrap, uh, let's say some cycle, uh, 
let me be concrete and take just N1 and M1 to be one. So in this case, that would be a, a cycle of that type. Because along A cycle, I have one unit, and along B, I have one unit, okay? And so, uh, so if it were in general more units, then uh, we see that, so in this case, the angle, theta, okay? Tangent theta, tangent theta is actually a ratio of the radius one, radius one and radi radius two. So tangent beta is R2 in this case over R1. Okay, this is for choice of n equal one and m equal one. But now if I have different m's, the tangent would be m one over n one. Okay, so the actual angles of the cycles in this flat context depend not only on the choice of wrapping numbers, but also on the ratio of radii, which is related to complex structure of two torus. Okay. So, so basically, this condition that angles add up to zero becomes condition on this ratios of radii. Because n and m we fixed. We fixed it to get three families, fixed it to, to satisfy tadpoles and all that. Okay? So this, this conditions on supersymmetry okay, become conditions on complex structure. Okay. So in tori, we only have two compli three complex structures for each two torus in the simplest case. So if we have more than three general brains, we have more than three conditions. So it can be over-constraining. So you have to be very careful. It's not trivial to satisfy Susie okay, in this case. Now imagine how hard this would be on general Calabiao when you really don't have much information on how to calculate the special Lagrangian conditions. Okay. But uh, the consequence is that, you know, a little bit related to your questions as you start deforming cycles, right? As you, uh, you, you, uh, as you change this ratio, something that was at some point supersymmetric cycle becomes non-supersymmetric. So, so, it's, so it's in some sense, the Susie condition becomes a condition on complex structure of module, okay? Um, right. Yeah, this would be actually all, and I would have to show you now some concrete example, okay? And as you see, while, while I, I, I went back and forth between general analysis and toroidal example, right, which I worked out even for tadpoles explicitly, it turns out that one cannot get standard model on tori with orientifold projection and SUSY, okay? There were no examples that were found. When people try to put orientifolds in, okay, either they satisfy still tadpoles, but it was still more constraining than you would naively think. Okay, so actually on toroidal orientifolds, pure toroidal orientifolds, there were no examples where you can satisfy all those conditions. Okay, you have to actually go to toroidal orbifolds okay, with orientifold projection. And now, you know, now this means I take the tour I explain, uh, I, I was dealing with and modding them out with some discrete action. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, they are not, whole, uh, whole, you see, that comes in type to be picture. Here they have to be special Lagrangians, okay? He, what, what this implies, you know, this angle condition that I locally derive, actually uh, uh, more formally is written as certain conditions that this holomorphic three forms imaginary part when pulled back onto, the, uh, onto this uh, cycle has to vanish, what makes it then supersymmetric, okay? So they are, those are non-trivial conditions, okay? In flat case, local thing is always the whole thing, okay? But anyway, the, the reason why explicit calculations of global models in this context uh, are done only in toroidal orbifolds is because we can describe cycles very explicitly, okay? So not just, uh, you know, general issues about intersections, but also supersymmetric conditions we can very explicitly analyze. 
If I did that on or Calabia oriented faults, then this special Lagrangian condition is not very well understood. And so mathematicians don't know, they, they can't help us. The picture you were introducing would be the type 2b dual picture, which would be then holomorphic curves and so on. Okay, so here is, uh, so he, the story that I'm telling you is very geometric and hands on, uh, but in explicit then calculations, uh, y you have to stick pretty much to examples where you know all about cycles, which are toroidal or defaults, okay? So the, uh, the, the T-dual picture of this description is more suitable for algebraic geometry techniques. And actually one has made more progress there, especially when we included non-perturbative non effects in global constructions, okay? But uh, for pedagogical lectures, this is, I think, more hands-on picture. Okay, so, uh, so now the, the things that we have to deal with is on Tori, I still don't have supersymmetric standard model, even if I have orientifold projection. So on examples of Tori with orientifold projection, so okay, still didn't work, okay, uh, uh, as far as having both three family standard models, supersymmetry, and tadpole satisfied, okay. So what we what one, one had to do is to some orbifold. And actually the first example is when we mod out geometry of six torus by Z2 cross Z2 symmetry, okay? So in this case, um, uh, the action on each of the complex coordinates, so if we have complex coordinates on a torus, The one of the Z2 action, which uh, let me call it, is, is action by small omega, say. What it geometrically does on the complex coordinates of each of the two tori, it uh, moves first to, by, rotates them by 180 degrees, or in other ways, Z, Z1 becomes minus Z1, minus Z2, and Z3. And then there is action of the second Z2, let me call this action theta. So what it does is it changes these coordinates into uh, Z1 minus Z2 minus Z3, okay? And then combination of two actions gives me the third uh, uh, geometric action on orbifolds. So basically what we have in each of the sector, we have now tori. For example, when we act with omega symmetry, uh, we have tori which have four fixed points in first two tori, okay? Because as the action z minus z, okay? In addition, we introduce orientifold planes, okay? And similarly for the other actions, I won't draw them. We introduce orientifold actions, okay? Now, orientifold action is still z to involution, okay? Z into, as I say, z bar, so we, clearly have cycles associated with A1, A2, A3 cycles, okay? This is clearly orientifold, orientifold plane, okay? But now there are also possibilities to rotate those planes under Z2 actions, okay? So if we make combination of Z2 action and the Z2 involution, we get new types of planes. Okay, so we get a new type of orientifold planes, and I think, so if I suppress this extra one, we get examples of planes that look like this. Uh, so let me write it, uh, it's, so, so let me just draw one cycle in first torus. Um, so it looks like this, for example. This would be one orientifold plane, like this. Because the Z2 action together with orientifold projection allows me to have new fixed planes, okay? So there are new types and, and, and all these permutations. So what I'm saying, trying to say is with the Z2 action, I have the original A1, A2, A3, but I also have now B1, B2, A3, and two more perturbations, 
okay, that are invariant, uh, that are fixed under orbifold and orientifold projection. Okay. So what this gives me now with new extra O planes, what does this give me in my tadpoles? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. There is actually a minus sign, thank you. It's a very good point, all right? So, so the point is, so having new planes plus two more perturbations, okay? This original one that, that is inherited from torus gives me in tadpole conditions this contribution, but now I have additional O planes, okay? And this O planes, you know, would sit, in this case, it would sit, uh, so, uh, uh, along a B1, B2, A3 with the minus sign, okay? So what that will give me, you see in this, uh, so in this picture of tadpole conditions, I would get here an additional contribution to charges, which would come with plus sign, okay? and four times eight because of this minus sign that you pointed out, okay? And similarly from the second O plane and similarly to the third one, okay? And uh, my task pool conditions now have additional O plane contributions and it's these charges that help us solve task poles and SUSY. Okay, we have enough opposite effect, effective charges from this different Z2 uh, uh, rotated planes, uh, O planes, that can now allow us to cancel the tadpoles. Okay? Yeah, the extra minus signs has to do with the orientation of the cycles. Okay, it turns out this is the only way you can make it supersymmetric. You can check that by acting with orientifold projections and see what happens, okay? Uh, if, if, if it were both in the opposite direction, the sum of angles would not be 2 pi, would be pi, but now it's zero. Yes, it is. Uh, so, so let me, um, uh, let me remind myself of that. So why is this, um, why is, let me just say, why is this configuration invariant or under orientifold action, okay? Uh, yes, so, so I have a sector. Let me just say I have a sector when I have orientifold action and omega action, okay? So I have a sector that, so how does, uh, for example, R omega act, okay? So, so let me argue uh, this plane, so this, this is minus minus, so, so I, I, I just want to argue that this should work. That this, this, and that, okay, is invariant, okay? Uh, so, so, so when I act with Z2 action, okay, this turns into that, okay? But then with the R action, it comes back up. And similarly for this guy, okay? Because it's again minus Z2 action, okay? It's minus minus, okay? And then I have three more other perturbations. One when we add, add with the combination R times theta and one with the combination R times theta times omega. Okay, well you can, yeah, check it. So it's, it's clearly that those are the ones that are fixed, right? Um, uh, but, but uh, that are really, they really go into themselves. You see, it's important that they go into themselves, okay? Because those are strictly fixed points of the action, okay? It's not that it's invariant, but it has to be strictly going into itself. Those are fixed points of, of the complete geometric action, okay? O plane. Yeah, I have to because, yeah. I have to look at all the fixed points of this action, right? Because the, the, uh, it has to be invariant under all the combination of all that, and that forces me to introduce those guys. But not uh, as you thought that I would use this one and Z2 rotate it or something. It's not that. 
okay? So, so that's the one, and that gives me new tide pool. And now, actually, that's the reason why one could solve in, in general now, because those are extra charges from all planes that allow me to balance contributions, okay, from the wrapping numbers of the planes. So, so this is, in principle, telling you why we had the better chance on orbifolds to work this out. And actually, we managed to work this out, okay, on specific orbifolds uh, and have a, a large number of standard-like models, okay? So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, so, uh, so, from the work of Douglas and Moore, we know that, you know, uh, taking all oriented poles and all the poles at the same time requires satisfying some particular constraint condition of the representation of the other poles and oriented poles. Right, so you're how talking how about torsion, I know. Yes, this is this is Z two cross Z two without torsion. It has to be specific action of Z two. Okay, one has to be careful about uh, yeah the some of the effects. But the Z two cross Z two don't have a torsion. Yeah, in this case, yeah, there are subtleties there. Okay, all right. So 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 the story is you have to go to orbifolds <coughs> at least you know and then, but nevertheless one has a model. You know they are on the order I would say many hundred models that are standard-like. In the context of Z2 cross Z2 orbifolds, mm -hmm. they are on the order of 10 standard models, globally consistent and supersymmetric, okay? And actually, Douglas and uh, Wadi, if he's in the audience, uh, they, uh, they were the ones uh, who actually did landscape analysis and came to the same conclusion. Uh, prior to theirs, we actually systematically put conditions, <coughs> standard model, structure, three families, supersymmetry, okay, and see how many conditions can be satisfied on Z2 cross Z2 or before, okay, and, and they are indeed was compatible with just landscape counting, okay, uh, and so, so maybe to, uh, let me show you one, uh, let me just give you wrapping numbers of one model, okay, uh, so we are talking on the order of 10 within Z2 cross Z2 that have three families and standard model gauge group. I'm not saying it's not the best, it's one of those, uh, it's not the original ones that we found with uh, Shio and Oranga. It's, um, it's one from another work when we did more systematic analysis of, of models um, with uh, Liu and Li. So in any case, uh, in this case, uh, if, I, if I have U, actually I start with U4 A brain cross U2 left B brain cross U2 right C brain cross some extra brains, actually f four sets of filler brains those that, that live on this four different O planes, basically, that produce SP group. So the actual gauge group was uh, SP2 to the fourth. It, it turned out that we have to put extra things. So, so to satisfy these conditions, there were certain conditions on the ratio of radii of those two tori, uh, three to tori, and then as a consequence we got, uh, so for example, the wrapping numbers. So if I parameterize wrapping numbers uh, in terms of N1, M1, N2, M2, N3, M3, okay. uh, it would effectively look like this for the A brain. So I, I would have that many that will give me U4 symmetry. Uh, and that would be 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And there would be another brain, U2 left, which would have wrapping number 3, 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1. And then would be U2 right, so C brain, which would have 3 minus 1, 0, 1, 1, minus 1. Okay. There is, there, there's more to the story. Actually, we have to tilt one of the torus, so counting of wrapping numbers is a little bit shifted. Okay, so, but let me, just to give you an idea, okay, and then we have four filler brains associated with each of these four O-planes that I was talking about. So it's one, 
two, three, four, four of them. Uh, uh, and actually, you know, in, in their case, those are basically one zero, one zero, right? Those are the ones you were harping on. And similarly, one, sorry, I didn't, one minus one, right? And uh, one zero, and then two more per per uh, permutations, okay? They're full, okay. And, and then we got, uh, so basically we have three type of uh, brains that, 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 it, that are, uh, that have um, at least this one, so you see, perhaps completely A and B cycles, A and B, A and B. Okay, this one is a little bit, this one, uh, SU2, SU left, uh, left and right have uh, other set of uh, wrapping numbers. Basically, this ensures for us that brain U4 with U2 intersects three times, okay? And U4 with U2 right intersects three times. So this is basically left-right symmetric model with three left-handed quarks and 4,2 representation and three right-handed quarks in 4,2 under U2 right, okay? So it's a, it's a version of left-right symmetric model and uh, but, but that's not all. It's not that we have only standard model, which we ensure that. The problem is, generically, we had to add those extra brains. We had to add them. But those brains now intersect with those. Just calculate intersection numbers, right, the way. And so we have brains that intersect with this filler brains that we needed for tadpoles, okay? And so we get extra exotic matter. And this is a more generic issue of the simplified construction. It's not just three families of quarks and leptons, but also exotics, okay? So, so uh, the model does have three families. Okay. We also get exotics. And uh, this is in part, you know, uh, this is somewhat an issue in this context because this extra filler brains, they can intersect with those. So those are the, what you would call hidden, right? But they are not really hidden and intersect. Okay. It's somewhat limitation of the orbifold constructions. There were models in these six orbifolds where you don't have any uh, exotics, for example, special examples. But generically you have, so this is a manifestation of the of the, of the issues in these models. Uh, last but not least, okay, let me, why I chose this one? Actually, it turns out that um, the size of cycles wrapped by U4, U2 left, and U2 right brains for supersymmetric case have exactly the same volume. It's a coincidental thing. This is not the case in general when we build standard models out of different stacks of rings. Okay? That it, it so happens that this example has the size of A, B, and C cycles the same, which is special coincidence. And the reason why you would like that, if this is part of the standard model, you want some kind of gauge coupling unification, hoping that this could lead you know, to, to some low energy indications that actually at large scales uh, Couplings unify, so so it's sort of cute, but 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 it has a lot of problems. It has a lot of exotics, and handling this thing at the at this level is is still rather involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more to the story. Yeah, thank you. So this is what I'm. You see the way you really do in this context. Uh, I can split U4 brains on homologically the same cycles and, and, and break it down into U3 color across what you call U1, B minus L, okay? And actually this U, U2 right, I could, with brain splitting, I can break it down only to U1, T, 3, R, okay? So, uh, so I would have actually uh, you know, U3 color, U2 left, and two extra non-anomalous U1s. Uh, th this, this comes, yeah, this I have to be careful. This comes a little bit, you have to be careful. But the point is to brain splitting, okay? You, you, you can get down to, to standard models 
with some new ones. And we found some br flat directions where we could break down this, this combination of extra U ones to just hypercharge. Okay. I mean, uh, you see, there are a lot of issues that are plaguing these models. And you know, right now, I just indicated one, which is modular stabilization, right? Because I have cycles which were not fixed, you know. I, I, I write a particular, draw a particular cycle, but I can move it, okay? And so uh, it, it's not rigid cycle, okay? One can sort of construct models with rigid cycles, but then there are other conditions that, that make them not nice because, we, you know. So, so, uh, so the issue of modular stabilization is still open issue. It's just the spectrum and global consistency that we are implementing now, okay? Uh, so, so maybe that would be a good point to stop to give you a flavor, you know, about how far one can get in this model building. So I have one more lecture, <laughs> and what I hope to do is, very briefly, I want to give you a flavor how one can calculate couplings, okay? and how some couplings that are not there can be actually induced due to non-perturbity effects. So more, more on a conceptual level, how this could work out. Yeah, thank you. Is the free groups of standard models are coming from brains which are 